Yahuwah knows the needs of all his creatures. In his love, he has provided specifically for each one. Yahuwah knew that man should not work continuously without interruption. Knowing our weakness and our need to rest, as well as our need to obey, he segmented or divided time. The shortest segment of time is the day, divided by daylight and darkness. The next segment of time is the lunation of the moon. After that comes the four seasons, the summer and winter solstices, and spring and fall equinoxes that divide a solar year. These segments of time are out of the hands of man, being under the direct control of the Creator and governed by the movements of the heavenly bodies. Then Elohim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And it was so. Each lunation was to be segmented by four Sabbaths, six work days, with worship on the seventh. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah thy Eloah. For in six days Yahuwah made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahuwah blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Yahuwah loves liberty and desires freedom for all his children. He commanded that the lunation or month be segmented by four Sabbaths, but that segmentation was put into the hands of man so that man could show his allegiance to the Elohim of heaven by obedience to the fourth commandment. While the Sabbath roughly follows the phases of the moon, it is not as clear and distinct a division of time as that of the day or the month. Yahuwah chose to leave this less defined, giving to man the opportunity to obey or disobey, depending upon what is in his heart to do. Those who love their Maker and seek to honor Him worship on the seventh day of the week. Their lunation is broken into four seven-day weeks with a translation day in 30-day months. Those who wish to rebel against the clear divine command are given the freedom to do so. A 30-day lunation can be divided into three 10-day weeks, as done in the calendar of the French Republic from 1793 to 1806, when the French government sought to de-Christianize France by getting away from a seven-day week. Worship on the seventh day of a seven-day week within the loony solar calendar is a sign of allegiance to the Creator. It acknowledges Him as the life and lawgiver to whom obedience, love, and devotion are owed. The spiritual purpose for segmenting time is to allow man time for self-evaluation. Every seventh-day Sabbath brings one face-to-face -face with the purity and holiness of Yahuwah. This throws into sharp contrast one's own failings and deformities. In the face of divine holiness, the repentant sinner exclaims, Woe is me, for I am undone! 
because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, Yahuwah of hosts. An additional worship day was given each lunation so that a person could examine where he had failed in the past lunation and to make resolutions for the upcoming lunation. This worship day is New Moon Day on the first of every month and comes before the work week which starts on the second of the month. New Moon Day is a time to meditate and consider one's spiritual status. How did it go in the past lunation? What do I want to do differently to bring my will and my life more in line with the will of my Creator? It is a time to seek forgiveness for past failings and help for the coming month. A prayer journal can be very useful when updated every new moon. People make New Year's resolutions, but they seldom keep them more than one or two months. Yahuwah understood this human failing and gave us the opportunity to refine and build on resolutions every new month. The modern Gregorian calendar, like the Julian calendar before it, has months that are completely divorced from the cycles of the moon. Thus, new moon days do not exist in this alternate method of timekeeping. However, this does not excuse anyone from returning worship to Yahuwah on new moon days. The new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was dependent upon the lunar cycle. Originally, the new moon was celebrated in the same way as the Sabbath. Gradually, it became less important, while the Sabbath became more and more a day of religion and humanity, of religious meditation and instruction, of peace and delight of the soul. New moons are in a class of worship day all by themselves. They were times of thanksgiving and rejoicing in heaven's bounty. Anciently, there were days of feasting as well. The prohibitions against cooking on Sabbaths did not apply to new moons, and devout Israelites who fasted on other days never fasted on a new moon. Work for Yahuwah can be performed on new moons. After the tabernacle had been constructed in the wilderness, Moses assembled all of the disparate parts on a new moon. And it came to pass, in the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. And Moses reared up the tabernacle, and fastened his sockets, and set up the boards thereof, and put in the bars thereof, and reared up his pillars. And he spread abroad the tent over the tabernacle, and put the covering of the tent above upon it, as Yahuwah commanded Moses. However, no income-generating commerce may be done, the defiant heart never appreciates the opportunities heaven has provided for time spent with the Creator. Centuries later, rebellious Israel bemoaned the lost business opportunities when Sabbaths and new moons came. When will the new moon be passed that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath that we may trade wheat? making the ephah small and the shekel large, falsifying the scales by deceit, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, even sell the bad wheat. Such an attitude is high treason against the government of heaven. New moons, like Seventh-day Sabbaths, 
are times of holy convocation, and the rejection of these holy days was directly responsible for Israel's overthrow by Assyria. The very next verses state, Yahuwah has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their works. Shall the land not tremble for this and everyone mourn who dwells in it? While Yahuwah graciously winks at times of ignorance, knowing disobedience is treated as the rebellion that it is, Israel's worship degenerated into a form that had no spiritual value whatsoever. Yahuwah rejected Israel's worship, stating, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them, neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. While Israel went through the motions of worshipping Yahuwah, they were in fact honoring Saturn, as had their forefathers in the wilderness at the Golden Calf. Yahuwah demanded, Did you offer me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? You also carried Sukkoth, your king, and Kayun, your idols, the star of your gods, which you made for yourselves. Therefore I will send you into captivity beyond Damascus, says Yahuwah, whose name is Yahuwah of hosts. Kayun, another name for the god Saturn. Ancient Israel, like modern spiritual Israel, rejected Yahuwah's new moons and returned worship on Saturn's day, or Saturday. Prayer to the planets on their respective days was a part of the worship of the heavenly bodies. Such worship is not acceptable to Yahuwah. In Amos, right after denouncing them for worship of Saturn, Yahuwah declares, Woe to them that set at naught Zion, and that trust in the mountain of Samaria. Ye who are approaching the evil day, who are drawing near and adopting false Sabbaths. Therefore now shall they depart into captivity. For Yahuwah has sworn by himself, saying, because I abhor all the pride of Jacob, I will cut off his city with all who inhabit it. The same fate awaits all who cling to worship on Saturday of the modern counterfeit calendar, ignoring the obligation of observing the Sabbaths and new moons of the biblical luni solar calendar. Worship on all the Sabbaths or rests of Yahuwah is the distinguishing mark that sets His people apart. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am Yahuwah that sanctify them. Indeed, Returning worship to the Creator on Sabbaths and new moons will be one of the joys of the redeemed in the new earth throughout all eternity. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith Yahuwah, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith Yahuwah. Commit now to worshiping Yahuwah on all his holy rests, 
Sabbaths, new moons, and annual feasts. Untold joys await those who seek fellowship with him, in whom all the fullness of life dwells.